The Mills. What is it? We're gonna make the Mills. No, that's not it. I'll give you a hint, it's an acronym. Dogs make it suck less. Damn, mama. I love serophagus. <laughs> How's that for a word of the day? Serophagus. It means feeding on lizards. Don't ask me why I know that. Also, yes, you guessed it. I'm a dangerous woman with a scrapple board. Eventually. Yeet? What's a yeet? Yeet! Today we are talking about distant mental influence on living system, DeMille's. It continues to amaze me that the evidence for some of this is so overwhelming, but uh, people just aren't here for it. Like formal scientific experiments that have been replicated again and again and are very statistically significant and the mainstream still doesn't want to even entertain the possibility that it's a possibility. And like, don't get me wrong, I think that skepticism is important when it comes to discerning the truth, but not when it comes at the expense of curiosity and open-mindedness and above all the pursuit of the truth. But I digress, idea sex for another time. Today we're here to just talk about DeMille's what the heck is it? So a typical DeMille's experiment goes something like this. You have a sender in one room and you have a receiver in another. Uh, the receiver may be in a Faraday cage and the sender can see the receiver, but the receiver can never see the sender. The sender will typically be viewing the receiver through either like a, a one-way glass or video or something. The receiver is also hooked up to uh, devices that take their physiological measurements. So it could be, you know, heart rate, skin perspiration, galvanic skin response, whatever the hell that is, different things that tell us whether that person is in a relaxed state or an aroused state. It's then the task of the sender to influence the state of that person. They'll either try to excite them or um, try to like calm them, depending on the nature of the experiment. So in some way they're tasked with influencing this person's physiology. There are a lot of variations on this theme, but you may have actually experienced this in real life. Have you ever, have you ever had the feeling of being stared at? That is actually a really common uh, experiment done, another kind of DeMille's experiment where someone has to determine whether or not someone is staring at them. And so randomly, like the person will look and the, the person, the receiver will like click the button and be like, yes, I can feel their eyes boring into the back of my head. But pretty much everyone has had that experience out in real life in our everyday lives where, you know, you're minding your own goddamn business and you can feel someone watching you and you turn around to look um, and someone is in fact staring at you. That is uh, an example of distant mental influence on a living system. You are the living system and that person is uh, distantly and mentally influencing your system. And this is kind of cool, right? Right? Well, sometimes I play it out to like the possible conclusions and uh, I'm a little concerned for us, right? Like today, it's influencing gerbils to run faster on their little gerbil wheels. Tomorrow, it's influencing the decisions of world leaders, right? Like mind control, evil DARPA's favorite. And that's the thing, my dudes, is I, if it is real, okay, if, and, and it really does seem to be the case. If this is real, it appears that we are at the infancy of our abilities. And like, thank God, because honestly, humanity, I don't think we can be trusted with this stuff for as long as money, remains the like pinnacle object of desire for as long as people are afraid of death, for as long as war exists in any freaking capacity and we are collectively slaves to greed and division and anger and fear is the big one. Did I say that one? And control, all of the bullshit. Um, I hope that these things remain under lock and key, right? Do, do you get where I'm going with this? We would destroy ourselves. Like think about the people throughout history who are believed to have had more evolved forms of these abilities, right? Um, Jesus is a great example. And let's just try on the idea hat that the stories about him are true, that he performed miracles, <laughs> miracles, levitation, uh, transmutation, the whole shebang. Let's just try on the idea hat, okay? You don't have to believe it, but the idea hat. What if he had access to those abilities because he wasn't using them for his personal gain, but for the highest good of all. And I feel like that's the only way that that we could ever be okay with having these things. And until we, if we never get to that point, then I hope that we never evolve any further because it's like, we have these abilities a little bit. They're statistically significant. They can be in a laboratory setting. We can have the direct experience of them, but we don't see, um, 
the the sort of large scale miracles or like um, pieces of evidence that no one can doubt, right? There's no like people healing the sick or like resurrecting the dead or anything. Um, and you know what? I think it's a really good thing. That being said, it's still interesting to test the bounds of what we everyday mortals can do. So you may recognize this book, The Reality of ESP. We've talked about it quite a bit on this channel, um, mostly in the context of Russell Targ and remote viewing. But today we're going to be talking about Dr. William Browd, who I don't think we've talked about on this channel yet, but he did a bunch of uh, MMI studies. One of his most famous, um, most successful being his experiments with red blood cells. In the blood cell experiments, subjects in the laboratory were asked to influence the behavior of red cells, which to the best of our knowledge have not shown any independent consciousness. In these studies, the cells were put into test tubes of distilled water, which is a toxic environment for them. If the salt content of the solution deviates too much from that of the blood plasma, the cell wall weakens and the contents of the cell spill into the solution. This unfortunate situation is dispassionately called homolysis. The homolysis experiments were a series with 32 different subjects. 20 tubes of blood were compared for each person. The subjects, situated in a distant room, had the task of attempting to save from aqueous destruction the little uh, the blood cells in 10 of the target tubes. The blood cells in the 10 control tubes had to fend for themselves. Broud found that the people working as remote healers were significantly able to retard the homolysis of the blood in the tubes they were trying to protect. These important experiments demonstrated a case in which mind of the subject slash healer was able to interact with a living system directly and in which one could not reasonably say the result was due to a placebo effect or a charming bedside manner. Another striking finding of this experiment was that the participants who produced the most statistically significant results were even more successful in protecting their own blood cells, rather their own blood cells, than they were at preserving the life of cells that came from another person. Interesting. Now these are older studies. Uh, they may have actually been before the turn of the 21st century. I can't remember. I'll have to find the original study and link it in the description if I can find it. Um, but at some point we will probably be doing more We'll take, we'll take a look at more modern studies, uh, so things in the DeMille's category, and we will do on-screen breakdown slash walkthroughs as we have done in the past. But in any case, I think this is a decent introduction to the topic of distant mental influence on living systems. And you can imagine how this might spin off into things like the law of attraction and miracle healings and telepathy and all the rest. But that's idea sex for another time. What do you think? Have you ever had the feeling of being stared at? Uh, have you ever distantly mentally influenced a living system? I have a story about that. Almost got arrested that one time. Oh, Link, is it? It's the left side, I think. Link there. But I used Jedi mind tricks <laughs> on the officer. <laughs> in any case, I would love to have idea sex with you in the comments. Thank you so much for joining me today. Hail to the power and the sight. And until next time, I hope you stay very, very blessed, my friends. Also, yes. Yeah, oh, yes. <laughs> Gary, can you speak? Yeah.